then got saved. It was so real. There's no way to describe what went on. But uh, if you ever want to see someone's life totally transformed for the glory of the Lord, Ben was the man. Uh, you know, I'm just thinking uh, as we go about our daily routines and as we talk to people about the Lord, I talked with two today that was very, very, they, uh, I wouldn't say irate, but I could see there was a fire burning inside of them uh, whenever I came to their door. And uh, could you help me pray as Brother Ben prayed just now that we would have receptive hearts to the Word? Pray that as we go to these people who need Christ, that God somehow would use his holy uh, power, amen, to melt their hearts, to give them a different perspective, perhaps, than they've ever seen before. Uh, you ever wondered why someone, some are receptive and some are not? You, you ever wondered what the percentages are? Tonight, the message here in Jude, it says of some having compassion and others with fear. Two ways to win a soul here. Some with the love of God. It melts in my heart. I didn't need a fear tactic. I didn't need to hear about hell. Hell was not preached tonight, I got saved. It was the love of Jesus. That got me. It got me. I wonder what the percentiles are here. It says, and of some, that's the message tonight, and of some, sounds like the minority to me. I, I may be wrong in that assumption. It sounds as if that the lesser degree of people will be saved in handing out the love message, the attributes of God, the love of God, okay? But before you leave a person, if they choke on the love of God, if they, just like the people today that just did not want it, it was very obvious. Two are in church tonight that know their neighbors did not want the gospel. I mean, it was apparent. One lady told me, sir, I've been up three days working hard. I need rest. Well, you know, the gospel never goes to the wrong door. It always accomplishes. Isaiah 55, verse number 11. Okay? Don't you think that you're a failure when you take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people God sent you to go to? Don't you beat yourself up that you did something wrong. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, verse number 11, that it, talking about the word, that's where we get salvation from, by the way. It's not from us. It will accomplish. Don't you just talk around and beat around the bush and talk about if, if in fact, football is going to come back in or not. But, and, and forget the message. I don't care if you're folksy. You need to be folksy. I, I don't care if you talk about stories. You need to, uh, to introduce yourself and testify a little bit. Yes. But don't forget the message. Amen. Let me suggest some verses for you. Romans 3.23. Romans 3.10. Romans 5, 8. Romans 6, 23. Romans 10, 9, 10, and 13. If that was too fast for you, they're on that card right there. Amen. Already written down for you. I say, here, man, take this into your convenience and read the back. And I smile. Amen. <laughs> I'm so sorry, man. You were resting. I didn't come announced. And I come unannounced. But please forgive me. And, and here, would you please just read that in your spare time? Yes, you don't think that I would uh, leave them without one, do you? No. Brother James, what are you handing out if somebody catches you without one of these little cards? I met a man today. Oh, did y'all catch that bear? If you can catch him without one of these, go early one morning. About <laughs> you got a hundred dollar bill. That mean? That is so mean of me to say that. I met a man out here on the uh, on, on, on the uh, the porch of the church today, 
and he was waiting on the bus and it started raining. He was underneath the culvert or underneath the, the roof line of our church. And, and I said, sir, we got to talking and, you know, uh, all these things was talked about. Uh, and he said, I'm this, I'm that. And I said, are you a Christian? My father just maybe came on out with it. And he said, oh, no, I'm not a Christian. I said, do you want to be a Christian? He said, I'm studying to be a Jehovah's Witness. He said, my wife's been one for years. She's been wanting me to be one. Her family's, all of her family's one. I said, sir, I said, would you come and let us preach to you just a little bit and share the word of God with you? And uh, he said, you know, uh, he said, the people that I'm studying with don't believe in hell. And I said, well, it doesn't matter what people believe. I said, I had rather not speak about it. I'm glad the subject came up because that's their big hindrance. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, I, you know, I, I'd rather not preach about that one subject. I said, but I believe that God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross of Calvary. He was trying to prevent us from Amen. going there. Amen. That's how much he loves us. Right. I said, furthermore, you don't have to go there, sir. I said, just because people say that there's no hell, what does God say? Yeah, right. amen. I left him with that. Did you know he was smiling by the time I got done? <laughs> he was actually smiling. How am I coming to hear you? How am I just coming to hear you? I, I was in a hospital room uh, uh, today, and, and, and there was a young lady. She was working with my dad. And, and by the way, tomorrow's my dad's 75th anniversary of the sinking of his ship. Senator's going to be there to present to him uh, the, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Wow. I've got one over there in the safe, but I found out it's not the gold one. The gold one's in Washington. <laughs> this is a brass one. <laughs> no, no, don't nobody try to break into the safe. Tonight. It's not real. Just letting you know. Is that all right with everybody? I thought it was real for the longest. This one's worth about 50 bucks. Somebody might still want to break in. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, the long and the short of it is there was a young lady in there. She was a nurse in the in the hospital room with my dad today. She said, Brother Train, she said, it's been a long time since I heard your verse voice. She said, I knew I knew that voice. She couldn't tell me who I was because I lost a lot of my, <laughs> my thickness up there. My top. Would you believe that this head used to house a lot of hair? Amen. I mean, sure it was did. thick. Oh, yeah. Brother Chris, enjoy what you got there now. <laughs> I've been there and done that. Look, they're still in love back there on the back seat. Amen. They got a license. You know, people get that license. That's so important. It's so important to get that license. But uh, but you know what? Uh, she said, tell my daddy you saw me today. Brother Lucas, tell him. And uh, with the heat and air. And Brother David told me he'd been here tonight. Y'all pray for him. He's got a uh, air conditioner problem that's leaking water all in his house. Oh. And I went out visiting with him today and said, Preacher, please give me a pass. Someone else called. Is that right or wrong to do when someone misses church, especially if they're faithful, uh, to send a text or call a pastor and say, Pastor, I'm so sorry. Would you forgive me? Or would you uh, would you pass over it uh, as just a, a weakness? Or would you pass over it because, uh, Pastor, uh, I've got a sickness and I sure don't want anybody to get it. Amen. Is that right or wrong to do? It's right. It's right to do. You know why? Uh, because we're looking and expecting you to be here, and we miss you when you're not here. Amen. And we want to know how to pray for you. And I told my wife, I said, that's the right thing to do, isn't it? I said, that's, that's, one, that's one of the backbone of the church that would do something like that. Praise God. Amen. You know who it was? Brother Bob. He don't want y'all to think that he's sick. He said, I just had shortness of breath, Pastor. Please. Pray for me. Uh -huh. He doesn't have any of the symptoms. He just has, he's just concerned. He's, he, he's getting on up there. But boy, had he been a good good member for our church. Him and Sister Carol both. I remember when God healed Sister Carol. They took out over half of her, her lung. Can you imagine? The top part of the lobe on one side. They took the whole thing out. Wow. Yes, God able. They said she wasn't going to make it. I said, is God able to bring healing to a person's body? Amen. I say that he is. Amen. So tonight, look at verse number 19. We didn't read this verse, but it kind of goes into 
the verses where we're at tonight. Notice it says, these be they who separate themselves, these mockers and these, uh, these people who walk after their, their own lust. It says they separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit of the Lord. And so there's a distinct difference between those who want to stay away uh, from uh, true believers, it says they are uh, separating themselves and they have a sensual spirit. They, uh, they don't separate themselves because they have the spirit. They separate themselves because they have not the spirit. And, and are they separate or private because they have private lives they live and do they want to hide something? Is there something so sensual and so, if you will, forgive me for saying it, so sexual uh, in their life, maybe misconduct uh, in that regard, that they don't want anybody to know? It's so ugly. God help us in these days during all of this that we don't get caught up in any of that. Amen. That'll drag you down. Amen. But notice who these people are who are counted as the beloved of God. We're to do the opposite. Verse 20, there's a contrast from verse 19. These who separate themselves and these who are sensual and these people who, if, if you will, have not the spirit of God. They have nothing in common with us. They, uh, they don't, uh, their spirit doesn't bear witness with our spirit. It says for us, however... But ye, beloved, build up yourself in the most holy faith. How do you increase in faith? So that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. We gather for worship to hear the precious word of God to, uh, to, to build us up, to encourage our souls. i never forget uh, preaching uh, the last time my granny came to hear me preach way down in the country. The name of the church was... Samara, Miss Grant, Sardis. Sardis. <clears throat> After one of the seven churches of Asia, she come walking out the door, four foot eleven, about 85, 90 pounds, soaking wet. She said, Sonny, she said, Stevie boy, she said, you fed my soul today. What is that? That's getting built up in the most holy faith. Amen. Got to get built up. Why? Because Satan wants to he wants to tear you down. Hey, don't be a part of the demolition uh, crew. Yeah. Be a part of the construction crew. Amen? Amen. Those who build up one another. We're to encourage one another. And so much the more. Amen. As we see that day approaching, that day of the Lord is coming from this direction. Do you get up every morning and say, Lord, if this is the day, so be it. Yeah. Even so, come Lord Jesus. I I hope you prayed that prayer. We're to build ourselves up in the most holy faith. Get up in the morning and put some gospel music on. See if that don't wake you up. Amen. Amen. I mean, look, uh, uh, get, get after that. Put on a preaching tape. I know it all dare somebody to put on a preaching tape wide open in the morning. Uh, my wife says, can it wait just a few minutes? Can you tone that down a little bit, preacher? <laughs> hey, do you know the difference between the people who are weak and those who are strong in the word? People who get up and get in the Word, they get strong in the Word. They get built up in the most holy faith. Uh, and, and so uh, a family that's strong uh, uh, are a part of a strong faith. Uh, they're a part of a strong uh, Bible-believing church. They're a part, uh, if you will, tonight uh, of a church that's not only preaching, but they're practicing uh, their faith. So a lot of preaching today going on. But I want to know this. Anyone or anything uh, can be built up uh, in the Lord if they stay under the word of the Lord. That's what we need tonight. And so build yourself up. Now what do we build ourselves up, up on? Number one tonight, can I say it's something that's been there all along and the disciples ask the Lord, Lord, increase our faith. Yeah. Increase our faith. And then they asked another request. They said, Lord, teach us to pray. Yes, amen. I think the two are connected. They're intertwined. Did you know when you pray, you better have faith. 
The, the twin sister to prayer is faith. You have to have and believe when you pray. Or don't even pray. I mean, look, don't waste the Lord's time if you don't have faith believing what you're praying for that God can and will uh, answer the prayer. Amen. Amen. So God uh, desires us to pray to Him and, and, and our faith is increased when we pray to Him. And, and look, uh, uh, our faith, it says, to build yourself up in the most holy faith. Now, if, it, if faith ain't holy, it's not faith. I'm talking about, we, listen, we, uh, we, we're standing on holy ground tonight, and we have a holy God tonight, and our holy God commands us uh, uh, as his children. He says, and by the way, he deserves this much. He says, be you holy. Amen. Even as I'm holy. Is, is that what he asks us to be like? Yes. And so if we want to be like God, look, don't join the most liberal church in town if you want to have holy faith. If you want to be built up in the most holy faith, the most holy faith, and, and you join the least, you know, faith church, weak in faith. Uh-uh. No. No. You get a church that's Bible-believing. You get a church that preaches the Word of God. You get a church that every teacher in the Sunday school is straight up. Amen. And are stu students of the Word of God and are teaching the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Yes, oh, listen, look at the collective faith uh, of the saints over verse number three of Jude. I, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you or encourage you that you should earnestly, <coughs> earnestly contend for the faith. This is the collective faith which was once uh, delivered unto the saints, these that were before you. These that paved the path that, that you came in here on tonight. Uh, the, the, the shoulders of greatness that we are standing on tonight. These that have passed us the faith that they delivered. The faith they, they gave us. Uh, the faith uh, amen, that was passed down to them. Uh, they passed it down to us. My question tonight, we've got some back in the back tonight that are in discipleship program and they're passing their faith down. My question to you, are you going to pass your faith uh, down to someone else uh, so they can carry uh, this light on down to the next generation? Amen. So vital. That's right. That we teach <laughs> others also. You understand the difference? Uh, and, and so the collective faith. Uh, and I hope our uh, your parents and grandparents were Christians, but uh, if they were, uh, if they were not Christians, uh, someone in their generation that was standing in the gap, Brother Dan was preaching on that the other night, and somebody that was faithful passed you the faith. That's why they were faithful. That's that's you can see. Listen, uh, if if we're faithful, we'll pass the faith. If we're not faithful, we will not pass the faith down. So, listen, David, Scripture says about David, served his generation by the will of God. How have you served your generation? Was it by the will of God? Or has it been out of the will of God? I sure hope not. I sure hope that you serve your generation by the will of God. Yes. By the word of God. In the church of God. Amen. In a strong church. Yes. Matter of fact. Amen. I'm so thankful I've had my church. Amen. I mean, on the worst day, I can rejoice that I'm part of this church. Amen. And we're keeping the faith. Yes. <laughs> we're keeping the faith. We're getting built up in the faith, the most holy faith. Then secondly tonight, uh, we must stay focused on the love and mercy of the Lord. Did you see it in verse 21? Keep yourself... Uh, Stay focused, in other words, in the love of God, looking uh, for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto, uh, unto eternal life. Uh, Amen. Oh, yes, stay focused. Yes. And we must stay focused and keep focused on love and mercy. That is the Christian's message, is it not? Uh, pointing others to Calvary. Oh, that great deal of mercy. The Lord had mercy for us on a hill. Far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. My little, little song, don't you? Amen. I'm talking about the hill of atonement tonight. I'm talking about 
the hill called Mount Calvary. Oh, thank God for it tonight. We must never get too far away yes. from Calvary. Did you know the text of the King James Bible is the only text that mentions the name Calvary? That's why I use it. Then all those churches out there that have the name Calvary must take their name off the, off the sign if we don't have a Bible that says Calvary. Amen. God help us tonight. I think about Brother Manuel over there in, in, in India with 500 and some odd churches, and, and he has the Calvary Baptist Church and the Calvary Baptist Foundation. What if he didn't have a proper text of the Bible that he didn't have? There's only one text that has the word Calvary. He, would, he wouldn't have been able to start all those churches if he didn't have a hill called Mount Calvary. Amen. Hey, listen, we must never get too far away from Jesus and his cross where he gave his life and shed his blood and he paid for our sins in full uh, on the cross. He doesn't need our help. I said he did it in full. Amen. You don't have to spend 10 years in purgatory. I said, my God, my Jesus paid for my sins yes. in full. Amen. He doesn't need your help. Just tell them all I said so. And then a man one day said, I just figured, preacher, that all of us are going to have to spend some time in purgatory. I said, you're looking at one of right. Not one second. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I don't know where they got that doctrine from, but they didn't find it in the Bible. I can't find that word in the Bible. Yeah. Hey, if you've got some kind of idea, you better back it up with chapter and verse. Amen. You know, everybody's got an opinion. Just like everybody's got a nose on your head. Well, I'd say most of us do. But you better back it up. You better not be teaching something or putting something out on the, on the public that just not thus saith the Lord. I'm saying he did all that he did. I mean, must we add to it? Must we take away from it? You cannot do so. No, the, the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Savior, that's enough. Yes, You're talking about the full gospel. We've got the full gospel. Amen. It's the death, burial, and the resurrection. Amen. And so just uh, leave the gospel alone. Just get it out. Amen. Quit trying to dissect the gospel. Quit trying to add to or take it away uh, from the gospel. Leave the complaining and leave the griping and leave the whining up to all those that are not full faith. But to us who have and are built up in the most holy faith, uh, just praise God tonight for the mercy and the love of God. Oh, love that true salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. We sang that song the other night. Brother John over there, Brother Ringer, did you catch it? He preached a message just before uh, he, uh, he he led that song. I said, I think the boys got it. That's how my daddy said he knew I'd been called God. God between every song, I want to preach a message. Oh, listen, it will be his love that draws us. Amen. It will be God's mercy that causes you to win the victory uh, in your life. Now listen, if you're in a church without love, I'm talking about those that are not willing to share and care and give and go and preach and teach and, and run buses and give the gospel plan of salvation. These are the churches with love. It's not the huggy, huggy, kissy, kissy, swoochy, swoochy kind of love. We don't need that right now. No, no. No, no, listen, there's a lot of churches in business for the show, for the hype, for the entertainment, for the club atmosphere, and, and, and they go away uh, supercharged, but what are they charged to do? What are they doing with that charge? You see, that's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, not the only Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit wants us to give out the gospel. Amen. If you haven't given out the gospel, You've not obeyed God. We've got to open this good book. And we've got to reason with people from the scriptures. I'm talking about, listen, listen, and of some, verse number 22, here it goes, we're going right down through the verses tonight, and of some have compassion. Some will allow you to have compassion on you and give them the gospel. Yes. Some will allow you to give them that love message from John 3, 16. Oh, preacher, I don't know those verses you call.
called out a while ago. I don't even have uh, one of those cards right there. Ah. How about John 3.16? You know that one. Amen. Don't you cop out on me, Baptist. You know enough gospel to win every soul on planet Earth. You just need to pray, Lord, send us to that one who needs you. Amen. And Lord, if you'll send me to that one who needs you, I pray that this morning. So I'm convinced that one of those two, or at least one, but probably both of them, that were so rejectful, that they're the very ones that need it. Amen. That's right. They're the ones. That, that's what. That's the problem. They're under conviction. Yeah, people are mad. This, and the little girl that got saved up here, I say little girl, she's probably 20 something. Uh, I'm telling you, after getting saved and baptized the Sunday, her family's upset with her. Would you pray? Amen. I went to call and I'm telling you, man, they're on fire. Oh, listen, what is that? That's conviction. See, that girl's living for God now. Amen. Amen. They see it in her life. Try. They see the change God's made in her life. Mm -hmm. and, and she's putting them to shame. Amen. She's making them look bad. I said the word of God will cause conviction. Yeah. If it's not causing conviction, something's wrong. Right. If it's not causing you to change your lifestyle, something's wrong. Mm. I say no conviction, no conversion. How about you? And some making a difference. Uh, it will make a difference. Uh, I want to make a difference. Do you want to make a difference? Do you want to stand in the gap where the men preached on the other night? Uh, listen, it will mean the whole world. And I believe this. I believe love's enough. I believe Jesus is enough. Love will penetrate that old callous, uh, hard heart, uh, that old hard, stiff neck. Uh, many, listen, many can be one with love. But they also include this. Many cannot be one that way. It, it doesn't go over too well with them. They don't know anything about the love of God because they've never experienced it. They don't know it. They've got to be shocked into reality. When I come up here with a sword on Sunday morning, some of them I shocked. One of them ran out the door. Never seen it on that wise before. Amen. Amen. That wasn't the love of God. That was something different. What was it? Listen, you know about the love of God, though. Huh. It did it for me. It, it, did it do it for you? How about VBS time? I had that love uh, given me. How about Sunday school time? That's the love of God, is it not? Uh, listen, that's an easy way for a child to get into Sunday school and hear about the Word of God and hear about the love of God. And, you know, the older they get, the harder it is to get them saved. Amen. Right. Yes, amen. Yeah. And look. While they're under your tutelage and while they're under your supervision, uh, don't let them miss a Sunday. Don't let them miss a Sunday night. Uh, don't let them miss a Wednesday night. It's so vital. Yet, listen, parents will intentionally keep their children away from the night services because they say that it's too hard on them to bring them to church. I'm so glad my parents didn't have that attitude about uh, bringing me to church. Amen. The word of God again will accomplish it. Yes. What it was sent to accomplish it. I'm saying it's having compassion on them while they're young. That's compassion bringing them to church, is it not? Amen. It's, all, it's called having compassion on the children that ride our Sunday school buses, free transportation to church. Thank God we have that because, listen, some may never hear any other way if they're not brought to church. I said we have to be the spiritual parents of some of these that we bring to church. Why? Because their real parents do not give them any spirituality whatsoever. My question is, why don't we pick up more? I was thinking of some bus captains uh, uh, in our church. And, and, and uh, I love the thought of having team spirit. I love the thought of, of, of recruiting workers for a bus ride. But uh, Brother Lamar, her lots of daughter, what's her name? Somebody help me. Is it Elizabeth? Uh, she uh, went to school here, and she uh, uh, she uh, she was involved heavily in the church. She went off to Bible college. She married a preacher man. And I tell you, listen, I asked her one day, I said, Sister Elizabeth, would you please give me your remedy and your recipe of how you have over 50 people on your bus every Sunday morning? I see that you're not involved in the promotions and the giveaways and the gimmicks. 
How in the world do you get more kids on there than anybody else? She said, it's real easy, Pastor. Every Sunday. Every Sunday was full. Every Sunday was full. This is what she said. I go in. It's amazing. They let me come in their home. They know I'm coming. I spend 30 minutes with every family. Amen. I just go in and sit down with them and start talking to them. Before you know it, I open the Bible with them. She had a little church in there with them. She sang to them. She, she, had, she had some encouraging words from God's word. And I'm saying, listen, compassion. And some having compassion. Well, we had some compassion at Soul Winners. I remember a lady, she, I won't bring her name up, but she used to be a member of this church, and I promise you, I don't know if she's still doing it. I hope she's doing it where she's at now. Because, friend, listen, every Sunday morning, she had somebody that she had gone to pick up, that she had won to Christ. And she walked that person down the aisle every Sunday of the world. And our church attendance just kept going up and up and up. We had people in here like that. They had compassion. That's a lost art, is it not? I'm saying compassion, the bus ministry is compassionate ministry. I don't know of any ministry that's brought more people to Christ uh, through uh, the New Testament church in this late uh, church age and the bus ministry. I can remember 50, 60, 70, yeah, even up to 100 kids on one bus. Not two trips, one trip. I've seen it here like that. What a blessing. Oh, what would be the most compassionate thing to do? To pick them up, bring them to church, and leave them at home. Let them just die in their sins. What would be the most compassionate thing? To go to the jailhouse and visit those that are dead in their trespasses and sin, or just let them rot over there in their sins? You tell me. What would be the most uh, you know, compassionate thing to do? Uh, to go when we have the opportunity to visit those elders in the convalescent home, or just let them lay over there? The last frontier, before they leave this world, just let them lay over there and die like animals, like dogs, die in their sins without any compassion. God help us to have compassion. God help us to preach with compassion, that little tear uh, in our eye. Amen. God help us, amen, in our last days. Uh, oh, praise God to have this compassion. Uh, Oh, friend, listen, listen to me now. Oh, we need compassion during this late church age. Uh, oh, think about it. I heard my daughter Jenny talking about an experience on the bus ride one day. She was trying to collect some up in Chicago land, and she said, Daddy, you won't believe what happened. She called me up. I knew something was up. I was hoping that she wasn't saying I'm getting married tomorrow or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> She got down there in the middle of South Chicago. I know what the answer to all these problems are. It's Jesus. Amen. Christ is the answer. Am I right? Amen. She got down in there. One of them back alleys, and she said, you know what? She said, I thought I was in a predicament. She said that I was really a poised for greatness. She said, because God allowed me to win a whole Latin game to the Lord today. Amen. Uh, oh, yeah. God used that little blonde-headed girl to stop them in their tracks, and then she gave them the power. Amen. She gave them the gospel. How could you say no to Jenny? <laughs> How could you say no to somebody that was giving you the gospel with compassion? Good night. It's not lust that people need. It's love. Amen. It's not sex people need. It's the gospel. Yes. It's not drugs that people need to feel their void and their emptiness. It will never fill you. Right. You'll always be chasing that first high you had. Mm -hmm. That's out of hell. You need the love of Jesus. Amen. Number four, the people that will not be one with the sweet, compassionate message. Listen, can't be one with the fear message. You read John 3, 16. You read Romans 10, 13. You read Romans 10 and 9. You read Romans 5 and 8. You read Romans 3.10 and Romans 3.23. And that love message does not penetrate them. Amen. Just flip over to the last chapter. You know, a lot of people don't really want to read Revelation because it's, it's pretty scary over there. 
just about what's going on now, but a hundred times worse. Mm -hmm. Revelation 21 8, even that. You read in Revelation 21 and 8, leave them with that. Don't, don't, don't try to, you know, shove it down their throat. Don't try to be mean with it. Because it can hurt them. I mean, it's sharper than any two edged sword. Revelation 21 and 8 is sharp. You leave them something to chew on, mm -hmm. they won't accept it. The love message. You let them know that without the love of God, where they're going. I let that man know that today that wouldn't take anything. He wouldn't take no for an answer that, that, that there was a place called hell. And I said, but why is it in the Bible? Jesus preached about it more times than he did about heaven. Why then? Because he doesn't want anybody to go there. Don't preach like you want people to go there when you're preaching on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Preach like you want people to miss it. Because you love them. You want them to miss hell. Amen. That's what this church is in existence for, by the way. Keeping people out of hell. Amen. That's the only reason we give our tithe. By the way, we need a tithe from you. Don't leave without your tithe tonight. We had such a low one. Uh, and we got some bills to do. Please don't forget your tithe. Now, I know the first is coming up, but we need your tithe. <laughs> We got to have it. Why do we keep the doors open? I met a, a member that was a member here before I came here. Many, many years. He lives beside Brother George Simpson. He's a good brother, a good Christian. And he left before I came, and he's a member of another Baptist church in town now. But uh, you know what I did? I said, Thank you, sir. All those years you tied down there keeping the doors open. Just ushered our little sweet family right on into the church. By the time they got there, it was still going. Amen. Amen. They were still going after souls. Amen. Thank God. You see, we need to keep the church strong. That's that's being compassionate too, isn't it? But what happens if we can't win them with a compassionate message? I'm saying, why is it that uh, we can't give them the whole counsel of God? Now, if there is a hell, do you believe there is? Yes, sir. We know there is. And we need to put that, we need to put the fire out. We need to get those people saved. The Bible here says, if you see it, save them with fear. Amen. Pulling them out of the fire. Amen. We've got some fire in our church. we got some good people, members of the church. Good members, let me ask you a question. Would you pull me out of the fire if my house was on fire? Amen. You would, wouldn't you? I'd do the same for you. Well, isn't it even worse for all of eternity? So people are going to be spending eternity in fire and hell. Read Mark 9 before you go to bed. You won't be able to sleep. Where the worm dies not, the fire is not quenched. Read that for a little while. I love the firemen. I think they do a great work. My hat's off to my slew. I appreciate it, but I appreciate you soul winners that are snatching, snatching souls out of, out of hell. Amen. Good night, morning. We know we can't save anybody. It's the Lord to save. I understand that. But I have found this to be true that people that are not practicing their faith and being obedient to the gospel and giving the gospel out, they get critical, mean, and ugly. Mm -hmm. They get cruel. They don't even want to talk to anybody about the Lord. God help us all to be more loving and more sin. Mm -hmm. Lastly, Lord. thank you. I've got some real support now. Did you be <laughs> Look, it's not for us Christians. Not for us Christians. We need to praise the Lord that we've been delivered from the flames ourselves. Verses 24 and 25. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. In other words, when we get there before our God and we stand before him and have to give an account, to, the Bible says he's going to present us faultless. Somebody ought to shout to him. Amen. He's going to parade us all over heaven. Yeah, There's going to be exceeding joy in the presence of our Lord when we arrive there. Why? Somebody witness to us. Yeah, right. Somebody yeah. preach the gospel to us. Yeah. Somebody preach with love in their heart. And we got doors to saved. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Listen, we also need to thank the Lord tonight that we've been kept from falling. 
We cannot fall. We cannot lose our salvation according to that verse right there. And God is the one that's keeping, we're not keeping ourselves saved. God saves us and God keeps us saved. Somebody ought to say amen. Look, at, if you will, to a companion text to that tonight, you might need a scripture to go with that one. Look at verse, uh, 1 Peter 1 and verse 5. Notice it says that we're kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last times. We're kept by the power of God. We're saved by the grace of God. Listen, we are wooed by the love of God. God is at work. Sometimes he doesn't go to sleep. God is working when we're not working. God's power, listen, is omnipotent. Power. It's all power. All we're going to be presented to the Lord one day with exceeding joy. Of our God. Yes. Oh, thank God. Or will we be perfect? No, far from it. But it says we'll be faultless. How good to find a fault in our Lord. Amen. Oh, what can wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes. Now, if you think you're perfect, if you think you have to be perfect before you start serving the Lord, I know some people. That think they have to be perfect before you start serving the Lord. There wouldn't be anybody serving the Lord if you had to be perfect before you started serving the Lord. Amen. Listen, God will take you right where you're at. Amen. But you cannot continue to stay where you're at. Yes. God's going to clean you up. Amen. God's going to get you ready and fit for heaven. And God's going to create you. And what, what, what he, the Bible says in Philippians 1 and 6, that which he uh, Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing, he which begun a good work in you will perform it under the day of Jesus. Yes. Thank God for that. <laughs> oh, thank God it's him, my love. Thank God because I'm a failure. And you're a failure. You don't look at me that way. Many times we fail the Lord. He never fails us. That's right. He never fails us, folks. Listen, we need to spend the rest of our days doing verse number 25 of our text tonight. We just need to do that. Praise and give glory and, and, and just give him praise and glory. I mean, from now and forevermore, we need to give him praise and glory. That he extended grace and mercy now to us. Yes. Isn't that wonderful tonight, folks? Yeah. I'm saying that is so wonderful. Listen, we don't have no reason to gripe and complain. Look. Uh, if, if you would, if, when you catch yourself doing so, just spend two, three, four, five, six times a day, seven times a day giving out the gospel. I promise you won't have time to write. That's right. Amen. You give out the gospel seven times in a day, the perfect number, you won't have any time uh, to murmur or to write. Uh, uh, oh, no, 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 no. The question tonight is, are you worshiping or are you whining? Are you shining or are you whining? Amen. Amen. Did you know you can tell the maturity level of a Christian by his attitude, right. by his behavior, by his mood swing? Amen. But if you don't get his way, he just goes bananas like a little child. Why, 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 why? It's not a very mature Christian that does that. Christians, listen, sober up. Be so, that's what the scripture says. Be vigilant. That's right. Our adversary, the devil, listen, he don't quit. He's trying to pull people down to hell with him. Right. We need to work this as hard. <sighs> listen, the, the, tonight, the, I, I'm thinking tonight that God is speaking to someone's heart. To, will we use our tongue for everything out of the world? And, and, and look, the only employees that I've ever lost, I never lost to alcohol. Here at the church. Not to my knowledge. I can promise you this. I've lost some that use their tongues for more than giving out the gospel. They were giving out the gossip. That gossip will catch up with you. That's right. Look, here's one, here's one way to keep yourself clean from all of that. All right? If a druggie needs a needle, and if you don't need a needle to so stay clean, look, you don't need a tongue wagging the wrong way. You, you need to 
stay clean from that. That's right. You need to keep yourself clean from that. You need to give out the gospel. That's a high they'll never come down from. They'll never forget you for having compassion. Just witness to them. Give them the gospel presentation. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever written down your testimony? Have you ever added some verses to it? Even if you're not presently sharing the gospel with anyone, have you ever written it out how you would present that to someone? Did you know you can send that all over the internet now? It's free. Amen. It's free. Someone took a picture of our track in the back of it and sent it all over the world. They, they didn't do much. They just took a picture. Sending out the gospel. Some having compassion. Can we think of ways this week before Sunday to get somebody to church? Can we think of ways to give the gospel to someone? Hey, don't forget, I got something good for you. Here's the good news. We've heard all the bad news in the world. We've heard it all. Shannon, you need to give that to somebody this week right there. Thank you. <laughs> She'll do it, you wait. She'll do it. You know we got an army girl. That's it right there. Right. Right here. Wait a minute. She wrote that old bus of mine. How many years? Well, just a little girl. There she is on the front row tonight. Brother Ben, right there. You picked her up. And a son having a passion. Oh, it made a difference. Amen. It made a difference for me. Oh, it made a difference. Separate trip just not. Hey, it ain't over yet. You don't know what that seed planted in our heart will do 10 years from now when they really need it. That's right. You're right. Am I telling it right? Yeah. When those kids really need it, they got something to fall back on. Right. Amen. But what are we going to do with kids that don't have a thimble full of faith? They don't have nobody to love them. Less than 10% of the children in our city go to Sunday school. What are we going to do about it? Well, nobody wants to go to Sunday school. I double dog dare somebody to get Elizabeth on the phone tonight. She lives in Theodore, Alabama tonight, and call over there and ask her what she would do to get her bus full. Maybe somebody wants to just invite her to come help a couple of weeks. I bet she'd come. She'd probably bring that gang of young as the Lord gave her. Am I right, Sister Kim? She's amazing. She is a she is a, we've had some great soul winners come through this church right here. Are you listening? We still got some. But we sent them around the world. Amen. God has been good to this church. Amen. And if some have compassion, church, let's get it back. Let's get it, let's get it hard, strong in it. Amen. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Father in heaven.